Ultra wide monitors have been here for quite some time, but as time passes by, they're just getting more and more popular. The term 21.9 was first introduced by Philips in January 2009, 16 years ago, and it was kind of a marketing move as the correct format is 64 per 27, that could be reduced to 7 per 3, but vendors wanted people to see it as an evolution of 16 per 9 instead of an evolution of 4 per 3, which was already a bit dated back then. So they called it 21 per 9, which is in reality 21 and 1 third per 9. The first TV to get released with this aspect ratio was the Philips Cinema 21 per 9, released in 2010, with early reviews calling it one of the coolest TVs to enter the market for quite some time, as it was definitely something new for the average user. Philips was rapidly followed by other brands such as Vizio, LG, Samsung and BOE, setting up a future trend. As for the first ultra-wide computer monitor, it was released in 2012, the LG EA93, offering a 29 inches ultra-wide IPS panel featuring a 1080p ultra-wide resolution, that is 2560 per 1080. And all these little steps took us to the current market we have right now in 2025, where we have lots of ultra-wide monitors from several brands and of course in several sizes, such as 29 inches, 34 inches, 38 inches, 45 inches and even a further evolution of ultra-wide called Super Ultra-wide. There are usually at least 49 inches and bring an aspect ratio of 32 per 9. But after all, what made these monitors a thing? And why do people buy them? I believe that one of the reasons was their improved working capabilities, as they deliver way more horizontal space and of course, the augmented immersion they bring to gaming scenarios as they deliver an increased field of view compared to the traditional 16x9 monitors. I myself started transitioning to ultra-wide monitors years ago and from the moment I experienced one, I was sold. Sold to the point where almost all my monitors are ultra-wide having only my OLED KDC G27P6 for testing mini computers, 240Hz by the way, and my OLED KDC 42 inches, the G42P5, for my tutorials as it is a 4K monitor and brings more, well, more quality to the recording. In terms of sizes, resolutions and field of view, brands generally tend to mislabel these monitors calling them 3K, 5K and all those bollocks, so let me give you some proper examples. Imagine you have a 24 inches 1080p monitor, which will be 1920 per 1080. Then you have a 29 inches 1080p ultra wide monitor. That monitor is still 1080p, but 1080p ultra wide, meaning that instead of being 1920 per 1080, it is 2560 per 1080, since it has a height of a 24 inches 16 per 9 monitor, but is wider. And the same applies for a 27 inches 1440p monitor, which will be 2560 per 1440. Then you have the 34 inches 1440p ultra wide monitor. That monitor is once again still 1440p, but 1440p ultra wide, meaning that we now have more horizontal space and a resolution of 3440 per 1440. And the same with 4K. Imagine that you have a 32 inches 4K monitor, 3840 per 2160, and then you have a 38 inches 4K ultra wide monitor, for example, that will feature a resolution of 5120 per 2160. This is how it basically works. It, is, it isn't 2K, 3K, or 5K, it is still 1080p, 1440p, or 4K. But instead of the normal ratio, it is ultra wide, meaning that we have more horizontal pixels. Playing games like The Witcher 3, for example, or even games like Path of Exile 2 is a much more pleasant experience since you can see a lot more of the map while playing, being not only more immersive but also allowing you to see enemies far away since you have way more horizontal space like in Path of Exile 2. To me personally, having a 34 inches ultra wide monitor is like having an enhanced 27 inches traditional one. A win-win situation. And if you really think about it, any smartphone from the last 10 years is using something close to it, which is 20 per 9 or 18 per 9. And everyone loves it. And well, this first part was for people that don't really know anything about ultra-wide monitors and they just wanted to know the differences in, in between resolution, how the ultra-wide aspect ratio started in terms of TVs, in terms of monitors and many other things. And in case you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel, this is Ancient Gameplays and I'm Fabio Pisco. Oh!
And now that we went through all those things about the aspect ratio, the extra horizontal space and so on, because that's one of the biggest things of having an ultra wide monitor, like for example, when you see these footages, you can see that for example, in terms of Fortnite, we can see that we have a lot more horizontal space and we can indeed see more of the map. And for some people even playing competitively, it might be a good thing. Some others don't really like the ultra wide aspect ratio because it's too distracting. In my opinion, I really love it because I do have a good sight in terms of motion and so on. And I can see other people moving in the map a bit more than I would see with a traditional monitor. And the same goes for, for example, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. It is just so much more immersive. You do lose a bit of FPS, but the immersion is so, so much better. You can see kind of the full extent of the arms and you can see way more on the sides as well. You can see more enemies, you can see more of the buildings. I just, I just feel it's way more immersive and sadly you can't really see it here, but in real life it makes a huge difference. And same goes for PUBG. You can see a lot more of the map when you're landing. You can see a lot more of the map when you're looking for enemies. There, there's so much more to see there. It's really, really impressive and it's so much more immersive because you have an additional field of view. And the same applies if you're into driving games because as you can see here with the Seto Corsa, because you can see so much more inside the car that it brings the immersion to a next level. It's just so much better than 16 per 9 in terms of gaming. So if you're really into driving games, this is really a must. At least compared to 16 per 9, 21 per 9 is the way to go. If you don't really want to go bankrupt with a 32 per 9 monitor, that actually has a decent resolution, uh, besides 1080p usually. But then we have the other side as well, the not so good side, because we do have the, the aspect ratio, the extra horizontal space for this aspect ratio, which is great of course, but we also have the downgraded performance as well, since we now have more horizontal pixels, because when going from 1440p to 1440p ultra wide, for example, you have 3414 per 1414 instead of 266. 2560, sorry, per 1440, meaning that you have more pixels and those pixels take power to process. And of course, the performance will be lower. But how lower exactly? 10%, 20%, 30%, let's see. But before testing it with the RTX 4070 Super and the RX 7900 GRE, let's just take a look at the sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Starting with the Seto Corsa, we have the two GPUs delivering around the same performance at 1080p, but with the RX 7900 GRE losing performance as the resolution goes up. Even though the GRE has a much bigger die, wider buzz and more VRAM. But in terms of scaling in between resolutions, things are, well, I could say that they, are, that they aren't much different, I'm even stuttering, if we look closely of course. In Counter-Strike 2, we have the RTX 4070 Super beating the RX 7900 GRE once more, even at higher resolutions. I believe this has to do with optimizations made to the X11, since both, As both Assetto Corsa and Counter-Strike 2 are running it. But again, in terms of performance scaling, things are pretty much matched. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is our first DX12 game, and also the first where the RX 7900 GRE finally beats the RTX 4070 Super by 7% at 1080p ultrawide and 11% at 1440p ultrawide. In terms of scaling, things aren't much different from the last benchmarks, with both cards achieving at 1440p ultrawide around 86% of the FPS they achieve at 1440p and achieving at 4K around 74% of the FPS they achieve at 1440p ultrawide. And Cyberpunk 2077 is the first game that suffers a lot from resolution changes, with the RX 7900 GRE being the faster card at anything above 1080p. This is one of those games where I tell people this is why 1440p ultrawide is much better than 4K gaming wise. You not only have a bigger field of view, as in games like Cyberpunk 2077, we have over 70% more performance at 1440p ultrawide than 4K. Or to be specific, 84% faster with the RTX 4070 Super and 76% faster with the RX 7900 GRE. That doesn't suffer as much as at higher resolution, sorry, since it has more raw power. 
Fortnite performs once again better on the RX 7900 GRE, as it should since the GRE is a small tier above the 4070 Super. But again, in terms of scaling, things are more or less the same once again, which is actually interesting to see. Two cards from two different vendors having basically the same resolution scaling in terms of FPS. As for PUBG, we have some interesting results. Because even though the RTX 4070 Super has a higher average across the board, or higher averages across the board, it also delivers consistently lower 1% lows, indicating that the gameplay on the AMD card is smoother. But the RTX 4070 Super also got more FPS on the previous DX11 titles, so this kind of doesn't surprise me at all. And to finalize, we have the 6 games averages. And again, I only tested 6 games as the point of this video isn't only the performance difference in between resolutions, but also the differences in between aspect ratios. Now, as soon as you look at the results percentage-wise, things are really funny to see. Again, two GPUs from two different vendors and slightly different tiers having basically the same performance drop in each resolution. Every single one within the margin of error. I believe that most people usually want to know the performance impact of going from 1440p to 1440p ultrawide, so if you want to see that example with both cards, you will lose around 20% performance. Or better said, you'll have at 1440p ultrawide around 80% the performance that you have at 1440p. Which is far from a bad deal considering that going to 4K gives you only around 67% the performance that you get at 1440p ultrawide. Because of course, you have way less pixels, but you will have way more performance as well. And well guys, as you saw, these are the performance impacts. And as I told you before, this is just six games and we could test much more, but I don't really want to make this video way longer than it needs to be. The performance impact from, let's say, 1440p to 1440p ultra wide is around from 15 to 20%, but we could say around 20%. People going from 1440p to 4K, which usually happens more than people going from 1440p to 1440p ultra wide, have a huge, really huge impact in terms of performance. We're talking in some cases like 80% performance decrease when going from 1440p native to 4K native. And of course, we now have upscalers so you can use the LSS or FSR performance to 4K, so 1080p to 4K, or even the balance or quality mode. And in that case scenario, the performance drop won't be as big, of course. But you could say that for 1440p, you can also use upscaling at 1440p. But talking of native resolution, the performance impact is just huge, really, really big, uh, going from 1440p to 4K. But well, you have a 27 inches 1440p monitor and you want to go to a 34 inches 1440p ultra wide. Well, I did that change before and I can tell you, I'm actually looking at the 27 inches monitor right now. Um, and yeah, I am very much prefer the 34 inches that I have here, which has basically the same height as that 27 inches one, but in reality we have way more horizontal space, it just feels much better to work with, much better to play with, it's just, it's just a banger. And I will upgrade, this is 34 inches, but I will upgrade to 38 inches as soon as I can, with a resolution of 3860 I believe, or 3840 per 1600. Um, because I still want to keep the 21 per 9 aspect ratio. 32 per 9 for me is a lot to work because you have to kind of kind of mess around with your neck posture. You need to rotate your neck and that will cause uh, or that may cause injuries or can cause severe pain after some time. So 21 per 9 is really the aspect ratio that I want for both gaming and productivity. And this is why I'm going from 34 inches to 38 inches, but still with a 21 per nine aspect ratio, in this case, ultra wide. So after all of this, do I advise you to use ultra wide monitors? Definitely. It's a very, very good thing nowadays. Every single game that I know supports ultra wide, like right out of the box. Even older games, if they don't really um, support ultra wide, you have patches or mods for ultra wide. I've been playing Legacy of Ken Defiance, which is a game from 2004, and even though that we now have the Soul River 1 and 2 remaster that already support ultra wide, Defiance did not support ultra wide and did not get any remastered, but with a mod, I could simply make it work at 1440p ultra wide with no issues so 
it is what it is. You can do it. It's simple. Uh, if we're talking about 32 per 9, that's a different story. In some cases, it is harder to get support. But in terms of 21 per 9, basically every single game nowadays supports 21 per 9. And every single game from at least the last 10 years, unless we're talking about Elden Ring not supporting ultra-wide aspect ratios and so on. That's dumb, but that's what it is. But generally, every single game supports ultra-wide and it is a much, much better experience. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. Also, the driver's video will come later to um, the 25.1.1. I This time I, I actually didn't get the drivers earlier or, or at least, well, I did, but only a couple of hours and I was already doing this video and testing other at the same time. So I'm just one man. My brother is now helping, helping me a bit more again uh, and things are flowing better, I guess. But still, I'm a kind of a one man army, so I can't really do much on that regard. But anyways, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the video and the topic. And if I said something wrong or tested something, something wrong, leave it in the comment section. I'm here to learn and improve every single day. So thank you once again and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.